Okay. All right, so we are recording. So Yoshi, welcome. And we're so excited to be here today. So thank you so much. Thank you and uh, good morning. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how many of you have caught previous sessions. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Yoshi. And for the past nine years, I've been teaching uh, relatively high level content electives uh, at Kyoto Sangyo University that you can see here. Um, those content level electives are things like gender studies or a course on identity or a course on positive psychology. So um, often some LGBTQIA plus type topics have come up and also over the nine years, I found myself going on quite a personal journey from a place where I kept my private life very much out of the classroom to a place where I use it as a bit of a resource in some cases. Um, so yesterday in the plenary session, I broke down uh, my talk into this why and how. And today in this follow up workshop. I'm not going to talk very much at all. This is the longest I'm going to talk here at the beginning for 10-15 minutes. But after that, I'm going to pass a lot of this over to you. Because um, I've heard that, you know, that's something people are really wanting and missing. Uh, I don't think that's just this year, um, although maybe it's a little harder on over Zoom. But in general, People go to presentations and they hear ideas and they want that chance to talk to each other and to share their own thoughts. And so I really tried to uh, create a workshop today where we can all do that because I also really wanna learn from you. Um, so we're not gonna cover the why at all. Uh, I'm just gonna refresh uh, your memory for those of you who were there yesterday um, of the steps of the how. Um, and for people who were not there, I'm just going to cover them very, very briefly. Um, and then I'm going to ask you for your own thoughts. Uh, the way I'm planning to do this is to cover these first three steps, give just a little refresher or details of what I meant by them. Um, and then ask you to go into breakout rooms um, and discuss a little bit by yourselves and come back and share your ideas. And then in the second half, we're going to look at this point because this is something a lot of teachers ask me about a lot. And I think um, maybe we can find our own individual ways of shaking our tail feathers. Uh, so going back to those four steps, this first one, probably badly named Ungender Your Classroom. Uh, again, the things that I was talking about was, first of all, if at all possible, uh, not to divide by gender in your classroom. Um, that means in terms of the way you ask your students to sit or uh, the activities that you ask them to do, um, even dialogues that you're getting them to read. I don't feel like you need to divide by gender there. And also the way you teach language and language usage. Um, also be, be mindful of the language that you're teaching them. Yesterday I talked about how I myself realized that I'm teaching ladies and gentlemen, whereas it's kind of an outdated phrase, um, as well as the language that you use in the classroom to talk to your students, because we're all making, or at least I all the time, am making uh, mistakes with the things that I say in terms of my bias as well. Like I mentioned, uh, yesterday, I heard a teacher say, oh, you ladies take a long time to get ready in the morning, don't you? And I think we all say things like that all the time, even if, you know, our own personal values and beliefs don't align with that, because we're trying to be funny, or we're trying to lighten the mood, or we're just not, um, you know, 100% perfect feminists or perfect whatever we are all the time. The second step was this one, uh, create a diversity positive culture. Um, the steps here were, the first one was create a unique, authentic, positive environment. And in that one, I talked about how 
Um, I don't ask my students, what did you do over the weekend? Instead, I lead them through either a team building activity or a positive um, reflection to raise well-being in the classroom or a self-disclosure type activity to raise authenticity in the classroom. Um, also having a set of explicit discussion rules. Uh, later on, one of the people present in yesterday's session told me that they also have a slide at the beginning of the semester where they um, explicitly state you know, anti-discrimination policies. I thought that was a great idea. Increasing visibility of support, um, either on your office, on your laptop, on your slides, something like pride stickers or um, placing your pronouns in email signatures or here like we're doing on Zoom. And also teaching or modeling gender neutral terminology like spouse, partner, they, parent, I think a lot of us already do that or correcting those really common otherization things that students will do. Like a lot of my students talk about, oh, he's a gay or he's a transgender, or we have to think deeply about this gender problem. And so just the nuance of that sounds a little bit more negative. So I sometimes raise their awareness of that kind of language as well. And sometimes people will say, you know, Mm, this kind of support or visibility in the classroom, isn't that too political? Shouldn't the teacher be neutral? And I really, I, I understand that. Um, that's something that I used to believe very strongly too. But I would argue that it's impossible that teaching is a very political act. And that, you know, just like you might bring your tumbler to the classroom or talk to your students about how we're going paperless or show them a Greta Thunberg speech, you know, you're bringing your environmentalism into the classroom. And I think as teachers, we do, we do bring our values and our viewpoints with us in the videos, materials, text, TED Talks that we choose and also those that we omit. So I think that's why my my standpoint on this is that if you own it, if you explicitly state that this is your view and you invite criticism and you invite discussion, then that is the best you can do in terms of neutrality. Uh, and the last one here, and I know that there are some chats coming up and I don't have it on my screen. I will have a look at those in a minute. Uh, was diversify materials. So um, if your hands are tied with textbooks or materials you have to use and you feel that in some way they are biased or too gendered, then if you can flag that to your students, discuss it with your students. Of course, to a certain extent, how much you can jump into that depends on their level. But even at a very basic level, you can lead them through you know, looking at the adjectives placed next to female characters or how often female characters are appearing. Um, when you can choose, choose consciously um, things that are going to provoke good discussions in the classroom about uh, gender diversity, but also other forms of diversity. And image, I think, is really powerful in terms of uh, breaking gender stereotypes in lower level classes as well as upper level classes. Um, and finally, I think, you know, if you have people who are um, owning certain identities, you might want to consider asking them if they want to be a resource. A lot of teachers talk to me about a kind of feeling of discomfort because they feel like they're talking about someone in the class. Um, especially, you know, maybe you're talking about race or hafu identity and uh, you have a kid sitting there who identifies in that way. I would say by all means, ask them if they want to be used as a resource, not in front of everybody else, but take them aside and, and ask them. 
And if they don't, ask them what they would like to say, what they would like you to teach on their behalf. Um, I've had students who fall on either side of this. I had one non-binary student who had, you know, asked me to, to use the pronoun they, and they had come out to me about their identity. But when I pulled them aside and I said, you know, we're, we're about to cover non-binary identity, would you like some time and space? They said, no. Um, but I asked, you know, what would you like me to teach? And they said, I, I think pronouns are very important. So we did talk about pronouns. I referred to that person as they, and other people started to do that too. And they read a Washington Post article called No Gender Fits. And in that way, like Matthew said in a, a discussion yesterday, they, they sort of sprinkled their identity over the class. They didn't come out in an explicit way, but uh, the students began to sense that this was the correct pronoun and uh, that had a really good effect on the class. And I've also had a trans student who said, yep, uh, I, I would like to take the floor now. And that was very, very uh, empowering as well. So uh, I would like to bring this over for discussion. Uh, First of all, I'm really curious to know about your teaching context and what do you already do and what do you think you could do in your own classroom and teaching environments um, with, re uh, with reference to those three steps. Oh, this is brilliant. Um, I, I really didn't want to close the breakout rooms because those discussions were fantastic. And I will be putting you back in breakout rooms. So if you were desperate to finish off that thought or that idea or to share that um, thing, please do uh, feel free to go back to steps one, two and three. Um, I just want to share a few things that I heard and um, I'm not going to use names just in case you didn't want your idea publicly shared. Um, but I, I heard one person say that when they speak of a researcher, um, they always use the pronoun they instead of he or she. I think that's great. I'm going to start doing that. Um, that some of you talk explicitly about representation in the classroom and maybe some lacking representations. Um, those of you who are involved in materials development, you're very conscious of this. I also really liked someone said, you know, when they're unsure of uh, how to respond to a student, they say, that's my homework. I think that's so important for us as teachers to just say, you know what, I don't know the answer to your question right now, but I will come back to you. And I also like to tell them that's your homework. <laughs> you know, you go find out. It's also my homework and we'll share our ideas. Um, I heard this, this little quote, you know, in my classroom, I, I create the image of the world I want, not the one we have. I love that. I think that's, you know, what I aspire to do too. Uh, someone else mentioned that, you know, LGBT type books don't necessarily exist as much um, in Japan. Um, and so they share uh, maybe some even picture books in English. I, I have a whole stack of those as well because partly it's just to read to my daughter, but um, you know, I, I like to read things like uh, Morris Micklewhite in the Tangerine Dress uh, to my students or uh, and Tango Makes Three. Often the language in the books is very accessible. The students are drawn by the different kinds of illustrations as well, and they can uh, provide really great fodder for discussion. Um, some of you talked about deliberately looking for uh, stereotype breaking materials um, or using gender neutral names. Asian role models, I think that's fantastic. I'm always telling my students, you know, they make presentations and the images in their presentations, they're more often than not, they're Caucasian people, even if they're talking about a deeply personal subject, or even if the person on the slide is supposed to be representing them. And I say to them, well, you know, why did you choose that person? <laughs> um, <clears throat> 
And I also try to do that in my own slides. Um, and an example of how you can even bring this kind of thing into grammar points. One person uh, used this uh, example. My brother and his boyfriend are going to Canada to get married and asking their students to uh, say, what is the mistake? So you're actually focusing on the grammar point, but you've got this other uh, thing that could be discussed in there. I wonder if I could just ask you for two, three minutes, if there's anything else that you'd like to share, could you write it in the chat so we would get a wonderful resource list? Erin, I don't know if there's any way to save the chat. But, yeah, that would be. Yeah, you can save the chat afterwards. And that would be so great if you just put in that chat any example of things you, you really wished you could share. Um, or things that you already do. I see there's a YouTube link there. Yep, SDGs, absolutely. I know a lot of people are working with SDGs. A welcome survey, yep, asking questions about pronouns. Yes, learning needs and requests, allergies, disabilities. What a fantastic idea. I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna steal that. Um, any others that you do? Yes, please do send it to me, I would love that. <laughs> I'm really learning so much just from listening to your discussions. And if there's any other ideas, put them in there. Uh, entrance exam question with a person named Sally and her wife taking a trip. Oh, it's so great. You know, this is how we use our position. Um, if you are in charge of an entrance exam, why not? Fantastic. Um, uh, queer eye in classes. Uh, where they came to Japan and spoke with a homosexual individual and celebrities came on to talk. Yep, I haven't seen that uh, episode of Queer Eye, but I'm sure that's a fantastic resource. Students choose an identity by random dice throw, build up the identity and role play, uh, devise a community event. Oh, I'd love to learn more about that one. Um, <clears throat> I might contact you later for that. Uh, Love makes a family. What is it? I don't know. Is this a song or a... You could unmute yourself if you like. It's a children's book. Oh, great. Okay. Uh... Okay. Um, perhaps, ooh, uh, ungendered language, day-to-day -day conversations. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree. Um, and again, just holding yourself accountable for when you make the mistakes publicly in the classroom, I find can be really useful to show students that making mistakes is absolutely natural. Even I do it all the time and I say the wrong thing all the time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, brilliant. If you, if you wouldn't mind, keep doing that uh, if, when things come to you. And then uh, I will ask Erin to share that with me and maybe we can find a way to share that with everyone at the end. Now I need to find my PowerPoint again. Um, and uh, here we go. You'd think I'd be a little faster at this considering we do it all the time for teaching. All right. Um, then I wanted to focus on this fourth step as well, uh, because a lot of people come and talk to me about this and ask, you know, how they can do it themselves. So just to refresh your memory, this is where I spoke about how I personally have made the decision to, in some classes where it's relevant, come out to my students um, and the knock-on effect that that has had. And I also spoke about um, how Avril, you know, makes um, a very explicit uh, discussion of race in her own classrooms and involves herself in her own stories, and how we've both found that uh, by doing so, students tend to uh, follow suit in terms of feeling more comfortable with the ways that they themselves stand out 
And then the question that I often get is, okay, that's great. You have this built-in way of standing out as different, but how can I uh, model that comfort with difference? I don't, and people often say, you know, I don't have a cross to bear. And I, I often say, you know, it doesn't have to be a cross to bear actually. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted you to think briefly about how you could bring, if you want, your authentic self to the classroom. And I think one way to consider that is to think about, you know, what ways are you already unique um, and which could you share? Um, and it could be in very small ways. I've just noticed here nationality and I'm immediately thinking of one of my coworkers who, you know, bakes trifle and I don't know, do you even bake trifle? I don't know how you make trifle, cooks, prepares trifle and brings it uh, into the class uh, to share with students. Um, <clears throat> uh, these are all ways in which some of us are different. Maybe you can just take a note in front of you uh, if in ways that you yourself find yourself to be unique. Um, you know, maybe in terms of passions, beliefs, maybe again, this is environmentalism or feminism, or maybe you have a lifestyle identity like you, you're a vegetarian or a vegan, and you're willing to let your students ask you questions about that. Um, and it really does not have to be something that's, you know, that feels threatening, I guess. Um, I'd like to give the example of one of my uh, co-workers, I've sort of highlighted these ones. Um, my co-worker Phil, uh, who's allowed me to speak about him here, uh, is a poet, a songwriter, in many ways just a creative genius. And instead of separating that part of his being, he brings it into the classroom. So he gave me the example where uh, his students are talking about identity and he uh, brings in his guitar and he sings this song he wrote called Will You Be My Home, which is about finding home in someone rather than a place. And he talks about his own sense of a lack of a traditional sense of home. And he said that he really feels that his students um, come up with their own unique ways of belonging uh, because he's modeled that. Um, and I asked him, uh, does he do it in any other ways? And he gave me this wonderful quote. Another way I bring creativity into the classroom is through storytelling. I share many examples of personal things that have happened in my life, which are often humorous or self-deprecating. I share my mishaps and my discoveries. It feels to me like students are more included to be maybe less guarded, more authentic with their own stories after seeing me laugh at myself. So again, I wanted to uh, ask you to join breakout rooms again and maybe just discuss this. How do you feel, first of all, about bringing your authentic self into the classroom? Because I definitely have gone on a transition with this. I didn't always feel like I wanted uh, my students to see me in that way. And to what extent do you feel you already share yourself and your stories with your students? Do you mention what you and your family did last weekend or not? Um, do you bring in any abilities or values or um, other unique points? And if you do, what impact do you think that has had? And do you think there are any other ways that maybe if you're not so comfortable doing that, are there other ways that you could model a comfort with difference. Um, that was way too short, right? It was too short. <laughs> oh, here comes everybody. Mm. Our group came in first. Yeah. <laughs> You found the button that takes a while for other people to find. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, here we go. I'm sorry. Not everyone is even here yet. It's too short, right? They said one hour workshop. I said that's long. No, it's not. I need like four. Um, <laughs> because I feel like, you know, I was just so I'm learning and uh, I have like one minute. Is it Aaron, can I talk for one minute or do I have to just be quiet? Of course, talk. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I just heard just a few things again, like um, it's not fair to ask my students if I don't share it myself. Um, I, I, I agree. And I also teach my students the language for things like, you know what, I don't want to talk about it because I think that's important too. If you're going to ask them to talk, I already know how to say I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I teach them to do that too. Um, there's somebody mentioned, you know, if you're teaching English and English is your second or your third language, then you're simplifying um, yourself as well. And then maybe it's harder to get the nuance of your identity over. And I, I really understand that. And I feel like that's something I haven't really thought about as much. And that has really given me food for thought. So thank you. Um, and, and then someone else said, you know, that um, we, taught, we teach through stories and stories are so important. And so I'm thinking, you know, even if you do simplify those stories, even just about, you know, things you have done or places you have been, um, then that's really valuable too. Um, and some of you were sharing different ways in which you share your identity in the classroom, perhaps even just as a older person who's working, which may be something that, you know, your students um, are also not aware that it's an unusual thing to be commuting to work um, as an older person in the morning and feeling like you're one of the only people. And I think it's great that we are sharing those stories and those parts of ourselves. Can you write anything else in the chat? Anything else that you didn't get a chance to say that you just really would love to say? And, and then I will be quiet. I won't even share my thank you slide. And passing over to Aaron. Well, we're going to say our thank yous to you. Can everyone unmute and say thank you and clap for Yoshi? Thank you. Thank you. What a great chance and a great opportunity for all of us. Thank you so much. Um, I do have to move along the room to the next presenter. However, the Hangouts room is open. So everyone can go over to the Hangouts room and you can all make a big group and keep going all those amazing conversations that we've been doing.